morning, how are you? Going the fast way today? Whee, here we go, fast way in. Also, the way we have to put the mirrors in. Well, technically, we put the mirrors in both ways. Now you might think I put the mirrors in for safety, but I don't. I put them in because I'm a mad driver. And I tend to cut to, you know, I tend to, whereas other cars would stop and pull in, for fear of scratching the paint, or losing their no claims bonus, not me, oh no. I laugh in the face of danger, ha ha ha. So, also I've got a little narrow car, so it doesn't really, I can. There we go, see, like, here we go, case in point. He's just driven past this place here, he could have pulled in, could have stopped obviously there, couldn't he? If I hadn't been doing 90 miles an hour. So he didn't see me. Anyway, traffic's been very quiet at the moment. How are you anyway, all right? Everything going well, I trust? Another lovely day in paradise. Low sun, high cloud. February the third or something. Fourth. I know, why don't I check my watch coming up to the worst bend on the entire journey? That's a sensible idea. <coughs> February the 4th, anyway. I had a patient cancel with COVID yesterday. So uh, asked if they could uh, make another appointment. Actually, uh, technically they asked if they could reschedule their appointment. Now, when a patient says, can I reschedule an appointment? What they mean is, can I make my change my appointment without incurring the late cancellation charge? That's what reschedule is a code for that. Make another appointment means make a second appointment with a second appointment charge, which is what tends to happen. So I always say, yes, we can get, we can make you another appointment. That's not, not a problem. Now, and the other, one of the other advantages of our pay in advance scheme, which I, uh, uh, you know, I extol and say that dentists haven't adopted yet, but surely will, is that um, when patients ring up to cancel and they've had like a family tragedy or something, you can be genuinely sympathetic with them. You don't have to stand there gritting your teeth saying, yes, I suppose your fact that you've got cancer is, means I will have to put, lose the money for the cancel appointment. You know, you can go, oh, oh dear, what a shame, what a shame, you know. Like, I'm genuinely sorry to hear that, you know, your dog's died and needs to. You know, you're having a funeral at the pet crematorium today instead of coming for your checkup. Because you're thinking, well, you know, there's a tragedy for them because they're paying for both, aren't they? They're going to be paying for the funeral and they're going to be paying for the checkup as well, which they've chosen not to not to attend. In fact, they don't. They could have just not turned up. But it's nice, nice of them to ring and tell you that you're going to get paid for doing nothing. Let me just put my uh, wind window thingy out. Not that I need it, I mean really, what, nothing over, I don't, there's nothing in it, do you know what I mean? I'm such a mad driver, <laughs> but there's nothing ever really appears in my rear view mirror. Most drivers, when they're driving along a long straight road, they'll be driving along and then they'll see something come up in their rear view mirror. I'm the opposite. I'm driving along a long straight road with a bunch of traffic and then I look in the review van and there's, they've gone. There's nothing there. Not that I break the speed limit, mind you, you know. I mean, don't get the wrong idea about me. Where's he going? Chandler and Dunn. Ah, they're my local farmers. That'll be full of meat, I'd imagine. And uh, they'll be going to sell it at our local market. So we've had um, we're going we're going for a funny time now. It's February the fourth, and we're going, we're coming up to a crunch day, the first of April. And on the first of April, they are going to uh, put the price cap up on domestic energy bills by six hundred quid, uh, putting out from roughly fourteen hundred pound to roughly two thousand pound a year. And you know, for the average person, that's a lot of money—fifty pounds a month—that could buy. 
private dentistry. Do you know what I mean? They they could they could join my DPAS scheme on a D band for less than that. So uh, don't underestimate the impact this is going to have on the family finances. And uh, we had our first person uh, cancel on the plan yesterday, which is an unusual thing for us. I mean, we literally only have like two or three people cancel every year. And. Um, you know, and she, but she was, you know, these people are quite honest. She said it's a choice between paying 30 quid into your plan or having food on the table. I've got to choose having food on the table because the times are tired. And I like wrote back and said, yeah, fair, I appreciate that. 100% completely appreciate that. And um, you'll, uh, you know, I hope to have you back soon. I mean, she didn't say that she wouldn't come in on a pay as you go basis. I think she probably would. But, um, you know, I assume that she meant that she was just uh, either giving up us or giving up dentistry in general. No, her teeth are fairly healthy, so I mean, you know, she, she'll be alright for the time being. As are all my patients. So we're getting, um, we're obviously getting in quite a few new patients. And um, quite a few children, you know. From the four-year-old with decay through to the uh, four-year-old, say with four carious uh, ease or there we go. That's got him out of the way. The two, uh, you know, fourteen-year-olds are coming in with one six that's shot through. I had a 14 year old yesterday who had one six that was completely shot through, lower right six, an upper left three that was um, buckly placed and completely excluded from the arch, and, and it's only just starting to erupt at 14, and uh, he had his wisdom teeth halfway through. Eh? Now, what are the chances of all that happening? That's one weird mouth. I had someone else in who got two, two decayed lower sixes that. Uh, uh, need to go to the community for extraction. I mean, it's very, uh, you know, we are starting to see the effects of uh, you know, closure of um, NHS. Well, let's just say the general lack of availability of NHS dentistry. Now, you know, the people who have found it difficult to find an NHS dentist and have really just let things go until they literally couldn't let it go any, any further. The bloke behind me is wearing a mask in his car. really does think that the air is full of miasma, doesn't he? Uh, so, yeah, so everything is uh, proving a challenge, you know, all these patients, are, see, see, I can't see him anymore, he's got any more room he's got. So, he's an old twit, though. As opposed to me, oh, I'm just a, not a young twit. <laughs> uh. And then, then we've got the hypocrisy of the Bank of England the chance not the Chancellor the uh, Governor of the Bank of England saying from from the perch of his £495,000 a year job uh, which was a reduction in salary by the way which took a reduction in salary when he joined I don't know whether he see, see the, the whole thing is very uh, the narrative is very carefully managed to uh, look like it's the back, uh, the reverse of what it actually is. So, for example, they say that he took a pay cut when he joined, um, but I don't. But I doubt very much if they if he marched into the Bank of England and said, um, "I've heard my pay is too much. I'd like it put down." I don't think he did that. I think what happened was he had a job in the private sector, which was like 750 or 1.5 million a year, and then uh, someone said to him, "How would you like to be governor of the Bank of England?" Oh, but it will involve earning less, you know, you will be taking a pay cut. And he said, well, you know, for the kudos and the prestige of, uh, of uh, messing everything up royally, um, I would, uh, you know, being the Caesar of the financial system, I don't mind, uh, I could probably, probably get by on, on 495,000 as opposed to 1.5 million, bearing in mind I've got a fair bit saved up, you know. So, 
So I don't think he took a pay cut. I think he's just got parachuted into that job on, on, on half a million because he could be relied upon, as the House of Lords report found, to monetise government debt. And the government spends a lot of money and they want it turned into uh, ready cash. And the Bank of England does that and uh, devalues everybody else's money as a result. And um, they need they need someone to help them launder the money. Do you know what I mean? They, the government needs someone at the Bank of England to help them launder the, the, the cash that they're spending. And the Bank of England does that. And you can't have anyone at the Bank of England who sort of you know, is not going along with a gag and is, doesn't know what the how things work, if you know what I mean. What's good for them. Anyway, from, from the high perch of his 495,000, he said that it would be um, uh, he, he'd much appreciate it if everybody in the country wouldn't ask for a pay rise, even though inflation's running at 5.4%. Uh, because uh, it would uh, not be helpful, you know, if wages started going up, because that would add to inflation. Now, how this guy thinks that uh, having printed all the money that caused the inflation in the first place by virtue of a much larger money supply chasing the same amount or less of goods and services causing prices to skyrocket, he's got the cheek to say that people shouldn't ask for pay rises to compensate for that. You know, they're, they're, they shouldn't ask for more pounds to compensate for the fact that their pounds have been devalued by him. I think it's just uh, hypocrisy of the most staggering, staggering uh, kind. And really, you know, and the chat that this can say, he can say this with a straight face, uh, proves that it's not, uh, I don't know. I, I, I flip-flop between them knowing what they're doing and doing it uh, deliberately and lying that, about what they're doing or just being completely stupid. And... Um, I think probably at the moment I'm more down on the complacent liars, smug, hypocrite side of things than than I am on the fact that they really, no one's ever explained uh, monetarism to them or they've never heard of Milton Friedman or anything. Hello, yes, 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 you're having a race, that's all right, we'll let you go. Yeah, so, so while these people are, um, you know, being hit by a £600 a year increase in their fuel bills, they're being told not to ask for any more money to pay for it. So, you know, if you wouldn't mind just kindly uh, <laughs> fading away into the poorhouse, <laughs> the, the, the governor of the Bank of England will be very grateful. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, and this can't end well. This cannot end well. There's no way this can end well. There's, that, there's, not a, there's no exit strategy to this that could end well. It's just, it's not possible. It's not mathematically possible, let's put it that way. If you're saying, oh yeah, no, someone will come along and, and think of a way out of it, they can't. If you can think of a way to make two and two equal five, then you might have a chance. But if you can't do that, then there's no good way out of this. It's just a question of when. And uh, that, I'll credit that last thought with Mike Maloney, to Mike Maloney, who does an excellent series of YouTube videos on the American debt, which is even worse than ours. So, so <clears throat> dentistry as a whole is holding up well. I mean, I always said in, as a service, it's, it's pretty recession-proof insofar as um, we are kept going by... Uh, you know, a cohort, a reservoir of people who haven't been to the dentist for a long time who then get really excruciating toothache. And as someone said to me the other day, uh, toothache is worse than giving birth, which is the gold standard of being in pain, isn't it? You know, they held up by women to be the gold standard of the suffering that they go through for us men, we men. And, um, and for, for, for humankind in general. And yet, uh, privately, they will admit that severe toothache is worse than childbirth. And so here we are, in, you know, masters of the, the, the gatekeepers to the solutions to that sort of pain. 
and that tends to keep us going during periods of recession. Look at all the crap that's down the side of the roads here. All people just throw it all out. People have got a natural tendency just to throw rubbish away into the environment. Uh, certainly saw it in Gambia. You know, they have no real uh, waste disposal systems there. So, you know, so I'm not, I'm not worried about the economic outlook from, from the surgery's point of view. I mean, I know I've been away for quite a long time, you know, two weeks in December, two weeks Christmas, two weeks in January. That's a fair old chunk of time that I've been taken out of circulation. But not as much as I was for the sort of three, four months in, uh, from March 2020 when we were literally banned from working. But... Um, and also, I mean, there's a tail effect from COVID in that there are a bunch of people who are still not um, willing to come to the surgery. You know, our uh, DPAS plan where we check up people three times a year, every four months. Um, we're still finding patients who are not only coming every six months or coming every eight months or sometimes they haven't been for a year, you know. Um, four month thing um, I mean again that just comes from a lot of experience you know a lot of trying things differently and and, and having an innate sense of what works <clears throat> we found that um, people who are paying 20 30 pounds a year in sort of um, in present day numbers uh, and only seeing us for a checkup twice a year and possibly being quite healthy and and possibly only needing like literally their teeth counted and a, a CPITN and the odd pair of bite wings and then we added on disclosing because um, you know we were, we were just short of stuff to do we just <laughs> there was some disaffection with the scheme when when they were in and out in five minutes and it was no use explaining to them well this is what you're paying for you know you're paying to be healthy you know we're keeping you they, they really didn't see us as being the shepherds of their oral health they really uh, decided that they were going to claim the credit for that themselves. Uh, if we only saw them like half an hour a year, and for that we got 300 quid, and they were like, um, that's poor value. So what we did is um, we stepped the checkups up to every four months or three times a year. Now four months, you might think, well, that's still you no know, months, but the point is that um, there is a subtle difference. Uh, if you see a patient and the last time they came was six months ago and you ask them to sort of just can they remember what they had done then they won't be able to remember six months is just outside that memory that sort of goldfish memory limit whereas if they come every four months if every if after four months you ask them to did they remember their last visit do they remember what we discussed etc then they will remember you know it's inside that memory limit so um, to a patient coming every four months feels like a lot it feels like it almost feels like too much to them sometimes they almost feel like they've only just got out of the surgery and they're being asked to come back in the surgery Yes, you're going to have to go somewhere else. Ba 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 ba. You can't park there. You can't park there. Oh, this is going to be one of those embarrassing situations. Right, I'll go and explain that to our main door. Oh. Oh. Hey, 
there we go. There's nothing like an argument. First time in the morning, is there? First thing. Anyway, can't be helped. I'll um, talk to you later. Bye.